how many of y'all are snackers you love to graze? Maybe apple slices here, maybe a handful of almonds there, maybe some siete chips, some paleo puffs. I don't care what it is. But if you have any issues like bloating, constipation, heartburn, or whatever, your snacking habit may be the culprit of your gut issues. I will explain all of this and give you my naturopathic protocol for better digestion in this episode of Heal Thyself. All right, if you are addicted to snacking, it could be disrupting your gut. Yes, I hate to break the news to you. Now, I'm going to give this caveat before anything. Everyone's different, and some people need to snack for blood sugar reasons. And if that's the case, great. Also, make sure you're getting enough fiber and protein in your diet. But I want to get back to this. A lot of you are suffering with gut issues, and your gastroenterologist, your functional doctor, your naturopathic doctor may have overlooked something called the migrating motor complex. It might be a mouthful. Regardless, important to know, especially if you're suffering with gut issues, you need to know about this. So you could tell your family and you could tell your friends and they're going to go, whoa, that makes so much sense. I feel so much better from doing that. And then you're going to be like, oh yeah, thanks, Dr. G. And then I'm going to be like, I got you. Okay. The migrating motor complex, it's a highly coordinated process. It's in the digestive system. It's it's a rhythmic process. And it plays a vital, vital, vital role in maintaining the health of your gut. It is essential. I don't know why they don't teach this immediately, but it's really important, especially in periods of fasting. It's basically the housekeeper, the cleaner of debris in your gut. And if you're eating constantly and grazing and snacking, then the housekeepers are never coming to the front door. You ain't never getting the insides clean. And that's problematic. And I'm going to go into why. So it's really, really important for you to understand if you have gut issues, I'm going to go over how the process works, why we need it to work, go a little bit about eating and fasting, how it affects it, and what affects the overall process in a negative way, in a positive way, and really supporting the overall digestive process. I'm going to go over some of my top protocols naturopathically to optimize your digestion while we talk about this migrating motor complex. So after this podcast, you will have all of the information you need to start making these interventions for better gut health and and noticing maybe in a week you're going to notice holy moly like why didn't anyone tell me about this the migrating motor complex cycle it's broken down into four phases each phase has a very specific role in your digestive process the entire cycle for the migrating motor complex is approximately 90 to 120 minutes when you are fasting okay so it doesn't happen when you're eating and again we're going to go into what happens but it doesn't happen when you're eating you got to make sure you're fasting for this process to happen, this essential process. The first phase is called the quiescent phase, right? And this is about 45 to 60 minutes in duration. And this is just a resting phase. There's really not any muscle contractions in the stomach or the small intestine. Your, your digestive system isn't pumping after you eat right now. This is the phase where the GI tract is quiet and there's little to no movement of any of the contents in there. This phase, it's a baseline state, right? Now, phase two is when these intermittent contractions start. This is about 30 to 45 minutes in duration. And this phase is where you're going to start to get irregular contractions. The stomach and the small intestines are becoming activated, but sometimes they're not strong enough to move large amounts of content from the stomach. But it's basically serving to prepare the digestive tract for upcoming intense contractions of the phase three. So they're sort of like the pre-contractions before the baby. Now, phase three. This is the phase that really helps redistribute and any of the remaining contents in the GI tract, clean it out basically. And this is the intense waves and it's the housekeeper wave. And this is about five to 15 minutes. You gotta be fasted for this to happen. And this is the most active phase of the migrating motor complex. And it's, and it's the housekeeper wave. This is when you're having strong rhythmic contractions. They are sweeping, think like a broom, sweeping the stomach the walls, cleaning it out, sweeping the walls of the intestines, cleaning it out, any debris. This is the phase that is the most important and therapeutic one. It's only five to 15 minutes on a fasted state. I wanna talk about something that we often take for granted and that is water. One of my first ever posts on Instagram was about water. And you know that actually 60% of our bodies are made of water. So staying hydrated is crucial for our overall health. But here's the catch. Three out of four homes in America have harmful contaminants in the tap water. This is why I'm so excited to tell you about Aqua True. These guys have created an amazing water purifier that uses a four-stage reverse osmosis process. 
And get this, their countertop purifiers work with no insulation or no plumbing. AquaTrue removes 15 times more contaminants than any other ordinary water pitchers out there. We're talking about all the nasty chlorine, fluorine, arsenic, and even some of the worst ones are those PFAS, the forever chemicals that have been found in 45% of US tap water. Stop drinking tap water. Seriously, long-term exposure to these chemicals can lead to some pretty scary health effects. So I love AquaChew. I love that it removes all of those nasty chemicals. I love that you're getting purified water for you and your children. But here's what blew me away. One set of the filters from the classic purifier makes an equivalent of 4,500 bottles of water. That's less than three cents a bottle. I've been using AquaChew for a while now. It truly tastes different compared to those old water filters. The best part, I don't worry about my tap water anymore. I know it's not just filtered, it's purified. And I got a really good deal for you. AquaTrue is offering you, the Heal Thyself listener, 20% off of any purifier. And you get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Give it a try. See if you like it. See how it works. See if it looks really nice on your countertop. And to get the offer, go to AquaTrue.com. That is A-Q-U-A-T-R-U.com. And enter the code DRG at checkout. Remember, that is 20% off of AquaTrue water purifiers when you use the code DRG. Have you been struggling with mood swings? If you begin really irritated about the simplest thing, someone's not responding to your email. I know a lot of you get really mad about these things, your partner leaving the dishes in the sink. Do you feel like your hormones are out of whack? Like you're not sleeping well, craving foods, especially those sugary foods, your hair, skin and nails don't look good, your muscles are sore, they feel different. There's a mineral that's behind a lot of this and it's magnesium. It's an absolute must to keep your hormones in check. If you feel your life changing, you feel like you're going downhill, you gotta start thinking about magnesium. Why the 70% of us that are deficient in it? Most of us are not getting enough magnesium from our diets alone. And when you're deficient in this vital mineral, your entire system is out of sync, especially your hormones. And there's hundreds of chemical reactions that magnesium plays a vital role in, from glucose metabolism, to balancing your hormones, to brain health, to heart health, muscles. Magnesium breakthrough is the best of the best, and it's by Bioptimizers. Everyone who uses it loves it. It's one of the most popular magnesiums out there for a reason. Why? They use a unique formula that contains seven different highly bioavailable forms of magnesium, including magnesium orotate, which is amazing for metabolic and hormonal health. It also helps support your hormonal health by supporting sleep and your digestive processes. If you wanna nourish your brain and your body, magnesium, 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 go to bioptimizers.com slash DRG, use the promo code DRG10, to get 10% off of any order. That is B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S dot com slash DRG. Use the code DRG10 for 10% off of any order. When this phase is happening, it's clearing out undigested food particles, bacteria, other debris from the GI tract. And guess what? It moves them towards the colon where they need to get out. It's super, super essential for preventing the growth of bacteria. Why? Well, when there's no debris being cleaned out from the digestive system, right? Those, those particles, right? When they're staying, the undigested food, they're not moving efficiently, bacteria is going to grow. And when bacteria grows in places it's not supposed to, outside of the colon, it's problematic. And we're going to go into SIBO in a second. But the last phase is the transition phase, phase four. And these are brief. It's only a few minutes. And it's a short transition phase. And it's the end of three that goes into phase one again, and it basically serves as the reset cycle. But remember, that housekeeper wave is what you want. You want that multiple times a day between meals. That wave never happens if you're snacking between meals. That wave only happens in a fasted state between meals. And if you have gut issues, especially if you have SIBO, you got to stop snacking. I'm sorry to be the one to break the news, all right? So the migrating motor complex has really, really important functions. One, we mentioned it's clearing the gut of the residual food particles, bacteria, other debris. It's got that cleansing wave. It's preventing the buildup of all those harmful substances in the gut that's building up bacteria, which brings me to SIBO, right? It's, it's preventing the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's sweeping away bacteria and preventing the stagnation of all of those contents that are in there that are helping bacteria to grow. And it's problematic because when bacteria are proliferating abnormally in the small intestine, it's going to lead to issues from SIBO. And that's everything from bloating, abdominal distension, right? Like excessive gas continuously from both ends, right? Diarrhea, constipation. You can get abdominal pain right after eating or 
discomfort in your belly, or you can even get nausea, unintentional weight loss, even nutrient deficiency. But it's not only it. It's also systematic processes in your body where you're feeling actually fatigue and weak after meals, brain fog. You're getting cognitive difficulties that are arising, food intolerances, right? Your belly's not happy with you, right? You have bacteria growing in your small intestine, and, and it's causing all of these issues. Bad breath, right? Halitosis. You even get in joint pains, inflammation, skin issues. How many of you are suffering with constant rosacea, rashes, acne? That can all, it's always connected to the gut. Anxiety, depression. Yes, yes, the mental health issues are connected with the gut health. We know that. And if you have IBS, one of the first things to look at is your consistency with snacking. And if you have SIBO, get tested for SIBO. Now, the migrating motor complex is basically ensuring that the digestive system is in that rhythmic pattern even when you're not eating, you want, you know, when you eat, it's going to start moving the food and you're going to have that gurgling and it's going to be moving. But when you're in a fasted state, you also want the body to be moving. How many of you have eaten, fasted, like, let's say go on a hike or whatever, and you, and you feel your belly start moving and, and it's gurgling and you're like, oh man, I'm getting hungry. I haven't eaten in two, three hours. Well, the migrating motor complex is cleaning everything out and it's, and you're getting hungry again. It's time for the next meal. And this is ensuring that you're preventing all of those buildup of all that residual stuff and preventing all of those issues that I mentioned from SIBO. Now, eating, the migrating motor complex is active during fasted periods. When you eat, it's interrupted, okay? And, and when it's interrupted, there can be the buildup of food. The migrating motor complex basically resumes after eating 90 to 120 minutes after the last meal has been digested and absorbed. So Think about it this way. If you eat, eat your meal, you want to give yourself at least 90 to 120 minutes before you're even eating anything else, especially for you out there who have gut issues. It's very important. Notice if you do this for a week, try two weeks and see how your gut issues are. It's really helpful for me, right? Fasting periods, really important. Uh, making sure that you're having a good amount of fasting uh, between meals. And from your last meal, dinner to then breakfast the next day, keep it at, you know, see what works for you, maybe 10 hours, nine hours, 12 hours, see what really works well. But removing those prolonged snacks, even if it's a small handful of nuts, a small, if it's only two chips that you eat, it's already disrupting that migrating motor complex and can lead to digestive issues. So factors that affect the migrating motor complex, there's a few. We know that um, consistent eating, but also you want to make sure you're having high fiber foods. A diet rich in good fiber supports basically regular bowel movements. And that's indirectly supporting the migrating motor complex by promoting gut motility, right? You want to make sure your gut is moving from really from your esophagus all the way down to your colon. It's moving and moving and moving. And fiber is going to help that move, right? You don't want anything backed up. We know that frequent snacking can affect it. But there's also medications. If you're on any medications called prokinetics, these are basically enhancing gut motility and they can stimulate the migrating motor complex. Those may be prescribed if you have delayed stomach emptying. Some of you out there have had these before. Opioids, they can slow down gut motility and they're going to inhibit the migrating motor complex. That's why some people who are on opioids get digestive issues because the migrating motor complex is not working at a high level like it's supposed to. Also, diabetes uh, can affect the nerves, that, which can affect the migrating motor complex. If you have hypothyroidism, it can slow down your metabolism and your gut motility, another thing. And IBS, of course, that's altered gut motility, which maybe could be caused by SIBO or maybe the IBS caused the SIBO. We don't know which one first, but but I would say, I would say that it's, it's nerve dysfunction into the gut caused by certain state, either an infection or states of trauma, which affect the gut motility. I can do a whole show on IBS. Actually, idea, I'll do my next whole show on IBS for all of you out there. And stress. We know that stress will affect the nervous system. The nervous system through the autonomic nervous system will affect the gut and gut motility. So no one's going to want to digest food when they're in a state of stress. So really, really important. The best things you can do are not snack and meditate or not snack and just be present or not snack and just get into a state of, of deep presence. You can, you can do a somatic meditation. You can do any meditation and just taking moments, 15, 20 minutes to really get into your body. That's really, really going to help your digestive system, especially teaching your body how to not get so hyper activated with stress, hyper aroused. So 
Multi migrating motor complex, really, really important to understand. It can be driving SIBO. It can drive other functional GI disorders. It can it can make IBS worse. It can it can make your heartburn worse. So really, really important to understand. All you're really doing is just removing the snacking and seeing how you're feeling. You want to at least allow three hours minimum, minimum in between meals, right? To really let it work. So if you're really suffering with severe digestive issues, give yourself three hours. Avoid the constant snacking and see how you feel. And if you notice over two weeks that you're feeling better, it's a migrating motor complex thing, okay? Making sure that you're optimizing this and, and having those periods of fasting that are really, really, really going to help, right? And removing any, and maybe talking to a doctor if you're on any of those medications that are affecting you or getting things like hypothyroid or diabetes under control. Now, to end this, I want to go over just some of my favorite interventions to optimize your digestive system, aside from snack, the moving snacking. Mindful eating, really important. This is, I, I could do a whole show on this. I might've actually done a whole show on this. You gotta take your time to chew your food. If you're swallowing food whole, you're putting more stress on your system. If someone goes, I have gut issues, Dr. G, what are the first two things I need to do? Uh, first three. I would say, chew your food, stop snacking and meditate, and then see how that works. So eating slower, chewing your food is going to be really important for the mechanical breakdown and actually activating all the digestive enzymes and avoiding all of those distractions that we love, the phone with food or TV with food. I'm guilty of it. I get it. Hydration, really important, making sure you're moving uh, your bowels and your digestive system is optimizing and you're, you have enough water in your system, right? So just making sure uh, you're having a good amount of water a day. Uh, I did a whole show on water how much water we should drink, go check that out. I did a hydration show. It's the one that I talked about with salt, putting salt in your water. Increasing fiber, of course. You can eat fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes. Increasing that bowel regularity and gut health, eating the fermented foods. I love how if you don't have a histamine issue, fermented foods are top six for your gut. You got to have those fermented foods. Notice if you even if you have a tablespoon of sauerkraut before meals, notice the big difference that it makes. Getting in digestive enzymes, some of you really benefit from digestive enzymes, whether it's from foods like papaya or pineapple or taking a supplement that has all the digestive enzymes or maybe an HCL product or combining both could be helpful at supporting your digestive system. Foods, of course, removing all of those inflammatory foods, the highly processed ones, the high sugar ones, balancing your diet with enough protein, healthy fats, complex carbohydrates, making sure you're getting a good amount of probiotics, evidence-based ones like lactobacillus, uh, bifidobacterium, making sure you're getting those if you need those as supplementation to support. Prebiotics, really fantastic ones that support your gut, are going to come from fiber-rich foods. So making sure you're giving your gut bacteria the foods that it needs, like garlic, onions, leeks, asparagus, banana, oats. Those are good sources of prebiotic foods to support your gut health. Loves, love herbs for reducing inflammation in the gut. Ginger is one of my favorite one. Turmeric is one of my favorite one. Uh, peppermint tea, one of my favorite ones, especially for those of you who have IBS and have a lot of indigestion and bloating. Same with fennel, whether it's fennel seeds that you want to chew or fennel tea. Fantastic if you're having too much bloating or gas. And even chamomile can be really soothing for the digestive issue, issues that you have, the digestive inflammation you may feel, especially if you have cramps. One of my favorite low-key ones that no one talks about is dandelion. Actually, dandelion helps liver and gallbladder. That's going to help aid in bile production and overall digestion. So if you're really intolerant to fats and you notice that every time I eat fat, my stomach hurts, dandelion root tea in conjunction with your meals or before meals can actually be really helpful. Apple cider vinegar, you can take a shot, uh, a small little teaspoon or tablespoon before you eat, it's going to stimulate stomach acid, especially if you have low stomach acid, which is a whole nother show. Um, I did that show before when we talk about, you can even Google it, put heal thyself, stomach acid, heal thyself. Um, I think it was when I talked about Prilosec. Really, really important uh, when it comes to heartburn and stomach acid. And we did a really good show with Dr. Guy Citron. Go check that one out. We talked about that too. Um, you want to optimize your stomach acid. So having things like bitters, or apple cider vinegar before meals is going to be really helpful. Regulate your physical activity. You want to make sure you walk after meals. So important, not only for reducing stress, for digestion, for blood sugar. It's one of my favorite things to do. I almost do it after every single meal at this point. Reducing stress. We talked about that. 
for reducing all of those uh, nervous system stimulation to the gut, excess nervous system stimulation. You want to make sure you're at a calm, peaceful state. A lot of people don't talk enough about eating consistently your meals. Your body wants consistency and it wants to be on a regular cycle. So you don't want to eat dinner one day at five o'clock and then the next day at eight and then go back to five and then seven. Make sure you're starting to get some regularity for your system and eating at times that are not too late. You don't want to eat too late, That you want to go with the circadian rhythm of your body and your digestive enzymes, okay? If you're not having magnesium, it's one of my favorite supplements. You got to take it, especially if you are constipated. Um, I talk a little bit about elimination diet in many of my shows uh, that I've done on nutrition and uh, gut issues. Elimination diet, you want to identify the trigger foods that your body hates. It's really that are, even if they're quote unquote good for you, you, you can Google right now how to do an elimination diet, talk to your doctor about it and removing all the trigger foods and gradually reintroducing them and seeing how they feel. Um, some of my favorite interventions that you can do for your gut and adequate sleep. Of course, your gut is going to be a mess if you're not sleeping well. Getting, like I talked about circadian rhythms with eating, getting into bed at consistent times is going to help your gut, right? It's going to help clean your gut. It's going to help your gut be ready. It's going to help your gut know what time it is. It's going to, you're going to feel replenished, renewed. It's really, really important for your digestive health. So there you go. Look, this is to help you. I know I have a very sensitive gut. My gut can go awry at any given time. So I take a lot of work to keep it in good health. Uh, from the emotional standpoint, we can always think about repressed emotions that stay in the gut, like fear and anger. But also, I really want to bring to your attention that you can make interventions yourself and see how they work. So, beautiful. I hope this really helped. Check out your gut, remove that snacking, and see how it helps you. Really hopes it helps. And, and, and if it does, let me know. Send me a DM. All the love. Thank you for listening to Heal Thyself, and we'll see you next week.